we declare that medical privacy should never again be violated. All travel and social restrictions must cease. I come from, from a state in Hawaii that had severe restrictions. Uh, we were not allowed to go to the beach, even though we know the sun was very important for vitamin D, and vitamin D is very important for our immune health. I was amazed that uh, the people at restaurants could ask for my personal data. They could find out by what kind of, if I wore a mask or not, whether I had been vaccinated or not. All personal data must be expunged from non-HIPAA compliant databases. But now everyone seems that it's their right to know what my personal medical information is. And this needs to stop. We need to return privacy to the patients and to the citizens. Thank you so much, Kurt. We declare that masks are not and never have been effective protection against an airborne respiratory virus in the community setting. Global COVID summit scientists in partnership with industrial hygiene experts have held this position from the outset and continue to oppose the government and CDC stance on this unscientific policy. You must understand that when handling pathogens that are supposedly quite detrimental to, to a society. We usually are enclosed in a self-contained suit with an air supply. And the fact that these masks are not even considered personal protection in any way, in any shape or any form, and they've been mandated in the community setting without a single randomized controlled trial supporting its use in this manner is unacceptable. The CDC nor OSHA recognizes these facial coverings as PPE. Even the new ASTM mask standard, which is ASTM F3502-21, which is standard specification for barrier face coverings, state that masks are not PPE and are not protective. Therefore, facial coverings are not part of the industrial hygiene's hierarchy of control, which is a stalwart in the area. The primary mechanism of transmission was declared by the CDC on May 7th to be through airborne aerosol particles. It's not as previous, previously thought through droplets. I'm sure you've had many an argument regarding a person's respiratory droplets carrying it. And that is not the case. It is, an air, it is airborne particles that facilitate transmission. And a 0 0.09 micron virion is not going to be mitigated by a mask, a cloth mask, a surgical mask, and an unfitted N95 and beyond. The evidence is clear. Masks of all types are ineffective and potentially harmful. There's never been an instant during instance during this pandemic where face coverings were appropriate. We still are waiting for that evidence. You don't use them in the community to mitigate infection or viral spread. The potential harm includes lowering your blood oxygen level, raising CO2, hyperventilating, potentially encouraging cross-contamination or self-contamination. How many times have you seen people touch them and touch other things? Masking diminishes social interactions, causes alienation, encourages conformity. It's even turned sensible people into informants for the authorities, telling on their, their neighbors, telling on their friends. The distancing, the social distancing for healthy individuals intentionally prolongs this pandemic, causing emotional damage and conditions people to be agreeable to such isolation. Masking hides facial cues. For children, for infants, they need those cues to develop. For social, emotional, and speech development, it's important for them to see you, to interact with you. It's evident that it's already caused such irreparable harm since the CDC has revised, for the first time, child development milestones under five years of age due to delays. Masking causes and aggregates cardiovascular 
aggravates cardiovascular respiratory illnesses. Masking patients in a hospital when they're short of breath just doesn't make sense. A recent peer-reviewed paper by Spira used data from 35 European countries reviewing mortality data from the most critical time, 2020 to 2021, during the pandemic. And this data showed that the measure was unable to reduce COVID-19 transmission. Moreover, the positive correlation between the mask usage in the community and the deaths in Western Europe also suggests that universal mask usage may, may have actually been harmful and have unintended consequences. We declare government and medical agencies must be held accountable. Each of these agencies and these companies should be independently scrutinized and held accountable for the damage that they have caused to humanity. This was a fake emergency, draconian measures and unjustified non-scientific lockdowns caused billions to suffer, especially the innocent children of this world. There is no current medical emergency. Failed agency heads and corrupt public health officials, including, but not limited to, Fauci, Walensky, Becerra, and countless others, must be removed from office and held accountable for mismanagement of this pandemic. Illegal, unconstitutional, First Amendment violating Homeland Security, quote, disinformation agencies must immediately be defunded and disbanded. We must immediately break up the too big to fail federal regulatory captured health agencies, all pharmaceutical funding of FDA, NIH and CDC foundations must end and independent oversight must be instituted. We as a human race promise to never again experiment on humanity after grave crimes committed in a war distant past. The Nuremberg Code should be codified into U.S. federal law and all nations law. EUA exceptions to common rule should be rescinded. As point one of the Nuremberg Code clearly states, and I recommend that you read all of number one through 10, the voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. This means that the person involved should have legal capacity to give consent, should be so situated as to be able to exercise, exercise free power of choice without the intervention of any element of force, fraud, deceit, duress, overreaching, or other ulterior form of constraint or coercion, and should have sufficient knowledge and comprehension of the elements of the subject matter involved as to enable him or her to make an understanding and enlightened decision. Again, please read all of the Nuremberg Code. We promised to humanity that we would never do this again, and yet here we are. Thank you for taking the time to listen to myself and my colleagues today speaking to you from the heart about what we've observed and what we're recommending as the Global COVID Summit team of over 17,000 physicians and scientists from all over the world. We've been astounded and appalled at what we've observed over the last couple of years, and we have consistently spoken out 